Yeah, we had uh, Friday dress clothes, you know, it's your Friday best, I guess. Saturday, ASU polo, slacks, you know, some nice, some nice shoes, and then Sunday we get country. Who's I like it. That? I'm sorry? Who, who kind of, what was the process in deciding which day it was? I don't know, Bloomy said he likes it. <laughs> and and uh, I'm, I've been waiting to wear this stuff for months now, so I was excited to wear it. Is that something the team plans to do for like every moment? I'd imagine so. I mean, I, I, I mean, you look good, you play good, right? I liked it. Rather chipper after a loss, albeit a very entertaining game. Is that just your kind of attitude with the game? Yeah, you know, when I look at the game, I look at a congregation of pitches, and I, I think that, you know, over 200-something pitches, we played really, really tough baseball. And the scoreboard is what it is, but, you know, there's no way I can be disappointed when I got, you know, 36 guys that are – intent on winning, playing every inning as hard as they can, and are behind me and behind each other. I mean, I can't, I can't be mad at those guys. You kind you of know. came on as the weekend went on, Kevin, you know, the home run there. Can you take me through that at bat? And like, uh, what kind of sparked that point in the dugout to go get that last one to tie it? Yeah, I certainly, I certainly had some nerves coming in, um, to, just to ASU in general, but especially my, my first series. Um, but I, I got to give credit where credit's due. I've got some really, really awesome guys in my corner. I mean, just to point out some names, I think everybody needs uh, a friend like Trey Newman, Jacob Tobias, Mario DeMera. I mean, the list goes on and on of guys who just had my back, could see that I was pressing, and honestly just gave me some good advice just to relax and play hard and have fun. And so, you know, coming into the into today, you know, the, the main goal for me was was to try to get a win. and. Once that all synced up, you could—I mean, you could see it. Everybody was trying to win in that win that game, and it was a it was a really phenomenal effort, I think. And it finally it finally cooled me down when I realized, you know, I've got some of my best friends behind me, you know, pushing in the same direction I am. When you're on the right field today after you're playing left to start the weekend, uh, that kind of adjustment for you. What's your experience right now? I actually played a lot of right field early on in my career, uh, so I think my I'm old. <laughs> and I had I have the red shirt in the COVID year, so it was probably 2021. I played a lot of right. Uh, 2022, I played like 50-50 right left, and then 2023, I played all center. So I feel comfortable in all three positions. Um, it's just wherever they need me that day. Uh, it's not a huge adjustment. Um, and I honestly, it was it was easier out there today. There, there was no sun. Left, left field was getting it the worst. So how do you think Compton handled that? Wonderful. I thought he was wonderful today. Uh, he looked poised. He's looked poised all weekend, um, and you know something that the the cameras won't get, and you know unfortunately you guys don't have a chance to see is how much work that guy puts in. It's it's really phenomenal. It's unbelievable uh, how early that guy gets here and, and and how much time he puts into the game. So, Harris, you guys have talked about how much how deep this lineup is, one through 15, 16 guys. Mm -hmm. How does it feel to, to lead off that lineup to start everything at the top? It feels great. You know, today I uh, my my first AB. Working to a 3-2 count, and I'm coming back in the dugout, and you know, I'm a little bit frustrated because you know I really felt like I had him timed up. I felt like I was seeing it good, and you know, looking at it, I've got new Contradas, then I've got Ryan Campos, then Jacob Tobias, and Kevin Carson. So there's four hitters who I don't even have to worry. I mean, just I don't have to worry about those guys. You know, I, I gave them an opportunity. It, it all comes back, I guess, to winning, right? If I just give them an opportunity to see what he's got, bang, put up a three spot. You know, so it's it's a uh, it's just a lot of fun to play in such a tight team atmosphere like we have. And when you guys said in preseason you had 14, 15 batters in the start, mm -hmm. you weren't joking. Um, when, when you have someone like Ethan Mendoza, a uh, true freshman, go five for five today, the, what is the energy like for the team to see that kind of a performance from someone who you know, is, is really just getting into the flow of, of college baseball at this stage? You know? Oh, God. I mean, how about that guy, first of all? <laughs> uh, second, I, it was five years ago, I remember my, my first college AB and my first college hit, and it, I was really impressed with how he seemed like he'd already done it before compared to when I got my first college hit. I mean, it was, it was, I was like, you know, so flustered. I was like, oh my God, I'm here. And he just, I mean, he looked like he'd been doing it for years. I mean, he just looked awesome at the plate. He knows what he wants to do. I mean, the kid's a gamer, you know? And so that was really exciting to see him bloom or not even bloom, but just be able to show off what he's got a little bit. You know, he's he's a competitor, and when when you got a team full of those, it's you know got to be careful. And you mean his, his 
first at bat uh, Friday or Saturday, or are you talking about today's first hit? I'm talking about his first hit. His first hit, what was that, yesterday? No, Friday. Friday. On Friday, up the middle. Yeah, I mean, he looked like he'd done that a thousand times, which I guess he has in high school, whatever at this level. Um, and then today, you know, same guy. He's the same guy, and he's been like that all fall, all spring, you know, tough ABs to really good ABs. He's the same dude, and it's, uh, you know, I expected nothing less than is there, is there solace in the fact that it's the one series despite the Sunday loss? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, um, that's the way college baseball set up. That's why we play three games. Um, and winning in college baseball, sweeping college baseball is the hardest thing to do. And I thought we put our best foot forward today and, you know, you look up at the scoreboard after and you come up a little foot short. But if we keep playing the game we played this whole weekend, watch out. Watch out for the Devils. Do you ever have, ever have scored as many runs in a single weekend as a team in college? I think you guys scored, what was it, 30? I don't think I've ever scored that many runs in a college baseball game. <laughs> I mean, it, it was awesome. I mean, the, the offense was electric this whole weekend. I mean, uh, granted, Mooney Mooney's a little bit of a launch pad, and you know, so both teams get to benefit from that. But even on the on the defensive and pitching side, I was really excited to see guys bounce back and attack and keep going back back over the dish over and over again, and just you know, keeping it tight enough to where the offense could you know hopefully take the lead and. I mean, I don't know how many back and forths we had this whole weekend, especially yesterday, you know? So I was just excited to see guys really grit their teeth today and yesterday, actually. Just grit their teeth and, you know, compete for the guy next to them. You talked about earlier being the leadoff guy in this lineup, but what is sort of your mental um, thinking when you the leadoff guy and mm -hmm. sort of the leadership, you know, um, of the uh, qualities that you kind of take in being that guy to lead off the lineup? Yeah, something uh, – it's, it's all kind of under – Bloomy's philosophy and um, and Goffey's is just be aggressive, and so they they give me the green light if I want to go the first pitch of the game, or you know if I want to see a couple. But when it comes to a team aspect, and when I'm thinking of it as as one of the older guys, it you know I want to give our lineup the best chance to score, right? So if I'm if I'm not on it on the OO pitch, then I need to get like I need to do everything I can to give our offense the best chance. So that's either getting on base or that's you know, trying to see seven to ten pitches in the net bat, you know, but it's all it's all just about competing. You know, I'm, I'm competing for the guys behind me so that they have the be their best opportunity. Is there anything new that, from your observations this weekend that you learned about this team, or did things kind of go according to your expectations? I mean, I, I, I would say this was about my expectation. I knew we were going to play hard. I knew we were going to play fast. I knew we were going to swing it, and I knew our pitchers were going to come in and attack the strike zone. And I think we checked all those boxes off. Um, but, you know, I think one thing that we emphasized is do not count us out ever, ever. So. So Isaiah Jackson with a crazy BB grab earlier. Just from another outfielder's perspective, well, how difficult is a catch like that to make it kind of what goes into as you're approaching the wall, getting up against it, and that whole process? I noticed this about Isaiah in the fall is that he just has phenomenal feel of the field itself. So, you know, at times early on, I was kind of getting lost at where I was in the park and he just, he just knows exactly where he is at all times. <clears throat> and that's what sets him up to be able to make those game changing plays is because he does, I don't even think the wall is necessarily in his mind. I think he just, he just knows. Like it's like a, like a sixth sense about him where he just knows when he has to jump, how high he has to jump, and where the glove placement needs to be, and the timing. I mean, the timing is crazy. That's the hardest part, but he just does it. Like he's a, he's a freak athlete, I mean, and he's a, he's a really great player. So I was, excited. I was excited for him, and I was excited for the, the team because that's, those game-changing plays can really swing the momentum in a game. How long does a sense like that generally take to develop in an outfielder? Uh, it, it it depends. I mean, it took me weeks of uh, batting practice to get used to it. Um, and obviously, I wasn't here last year, so I didn't get to see his his first year here. But if I were to guess, if I were to put money down, I would say that he's. It took him very little time to just to have a sixth sense of where he is. I mean, he's just a he's a ball player, you know, and he's a, and he's a really good one. He also had ten on the eyes this weekend. That number, even when you register for a weekend series, do you? I mean, that's those are 
video game stats. I mean, and the, and the guy was dialed in. I mean, coming down to our last at bat with a winning run on first base, I don't know who else I want out the dish there. You know, I had 100% faith in him. And, you know, one thing we need to emphasize, and I don't, I'm not worried about him at all, but in any situation like that is just keep, just keep doing it. You didn't work out, I mean, didn't work out that time, but just keep doing it. Like that's, that's the guy we wanted in that position at that stage of the game. And you know what? I'm willing to hang my hat on that at bat any day of the week, twice on Sunday, so.